I want you to take a look at a couple that uh, was in debt, I think about $147,000. They were making good money. These were Christian people, but they were perishing for the lack of knowledge. And sometimes it's not the lack of knowledge, it's the lack of discipline. It's the lack of doing something with the knowledge that you already possess. But I want you to see some people that were impacted by Brother Dave Ramsey and uh, watch this testimony. In the lobby of Financial Peace Plaza is Ty and Nikki. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, Dave. Hey Dave. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Where are you guys from? Right outside of Atlanta. Oh, out fun. Out of Springs, Georgia. Well, cool. Well, thanks for coming to Nashville today and joining us as we head into the Thanksgiving weekend. I'm guessing you're here to do a debt-free scream? Without yes, a doubt. Sir. I love it. And how much have you guys paid off? Just over $147,000. Awesome. How long did that take you? It took us about three years, six months, and 14 days. <laughs> Give or take. <laughs> Give or take. I like it. And what was your household income during that three years and six months and 14 days? We began about at 140 and moved up from there uh, to about 168. Excellent. What do you guys do for a living? I am a black belt Six Sigma mm -hmm. uh, process improvement guy for Yancey Brothers there in the state of Georgia. Yeah. And my wife is a uh, uh -huh. I work for Big Brothers Big Sisters, a nonprofit. I'm the IT manager and the facility director there. Oh, wow. Two great careers. <laughs> Excellent. Very well done. Absolutely incredible. So what happened three years ago, three years, six months, and 14 days ago that caused you to want to get out of debt? It was, uh, I did my taxes. <laughs> 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 and uh, saw the bottom line that, that uh, based on those numbers, what we made, and I had very, very little to show for it. As a matter of fact, we had nothing. Uh, to show for it. A lot of a lot of debt. A lot of money went in and a lot of money went out. More, mm. than, more than that came in. And it mm -hmm. was pretty disappointing. Um, and thought to myself, if my grandmother knew mm. what I made and had nothing to show for it, uh, she would slap me a, a few <laughs> times. <laughs> so so uh, you know, that was, the, that was the, uh, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, really. It, mm -hmm. it was a number of other things that, that kind of influenced it. Uh, a uh, few services at our church where offerings were taken up and we couldn't participate to help and uh, have family members or friends that are connected to us that needed help and weren't in a position to help. Mm -hmm. And that was very frustrating for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then looking at my, my kids, Dave, and, and uh, them wanting to do some things and, and weren't able to do it. A great education, great job, but nothing to show for it. Just, mm -hmm. just felt, felt helpless. Mm -hmm. A lot of weight, man. Mm -hmm. Sleepless nights and it was a lot of stress on us. So, what, what kind of debt was the hundred and forty-seven thousand? You name it, uh, <laughs> we had stupid. Uh, <laughs> we got that T-shirt, uh, if you will. We had um, student loans, um, car debt, uh, credit cards, family debt, <laughs> yeah. um, this and that. I mean, it was every kind of consumer debt you can think of. Dave, I think the stupidest thing we've ever done was purchase two BMWs, brand new off the lot at the same time. Oh. Uh, and uh, so you, you talk about, <laughs> still, I think we lived, uh, before we had kids, we said, why well, have kids if you can have BMW? So <laughs> just, just really crazy, buddy. <laughs> Thank God for wisdom yeah. and maturity. I love it. I love it. So what do you tell people the key is? Because you're a process guy, if anybody is. I mean, Black Belt Six Sigma, you know how to look at what has happened here and unpack it. It's how you're trained. Yes, sir. And so what has happened in the three years, six months, and 14 days? What do you tell people the keys are, the key principles that drove this process for you guys? Uh, plan and accountability. Mm -hmm. um, two things that we felt uh, are absolutely necessary. In order to do anything and accomplish anything, you got to have a plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I believe that's what we did over the last three years. We wrote a vision. We sat down and we said, this is where we want to be and this is what we want to do. Uh, we live by a budget. That's our plan. Yeah. Um, before the money comes in, we write it down. I love it. And we tell our money where to go instead of our money telling us where to go. Mm -hmm. And then on, on top of that, the accountability. Um, my wife and I are a great team. Um, but we have others around of us that just encourage us at our church. I got your book from a, from a friend of mine mm -hmm. uh, at my church. In fact, I'm going to take him a new one because I, <laughs> I still have it. Uh, Pastor Randy and, and Tracy, they're great friends of accountability there that held our hand through this process and really encouraged us. So that accountability, both within the marriage as well as out, that supported us was very important. 
Nikki, what was the hardest thing you guys did in the last three years to make this happen? Well, for me, it was it was interesting to figure out how to get creative. So um, with the emergency fund and with the way he would budget, because he had extreme, I call it micro focus mm -hmm. around the budget. Mm -hmm. he would, he, every day he's got his eye on where the pennies are, not the big dollars, but every penny. So he would say, OK, it's uh her birthday's coming up, you have $100, figure mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. And so I have to get down and figure out what I could do with $100 mm -hmm. for a particular birthday. Or Christmas is coming, you have this amount of money. And so it, it, at first it was challenging to mm -hmm. maneuver under those types of restrictions and constraints, but now it's, it's our way of life. Now, did it's you, when do. you all were putting the budget together, you had a say in that, but then he came back and said, hey, this is the budget we agreed to, and sure. this is what it means for you. It absolutely. wasn't like he was just telling you. No, absolutely. Okay. We're, a, we're a team, and I would say, okay, I need some shoes. And he mm -hmm. would say, okay, let's talk about it, okay? This is mm -hmm. what the shoe budget is going to be. Mm -hmm. You can have the money on this day, mm -hmm. and I would take the money and make miracles happen. You get real creative <laughs> when you have to, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> yes, you can. I love it. Well, congratulations. What was the one debt that when you paid it off, you said, I hate you people. I'm never going back in debt. For me, it was the student loan because that was a debt that I carried into the marriage. Mm. And it wasn't even a lot of, it wasn't a large amount of money, mm -hmm. but I just think that I was of the mindset that you're always going to have the student loan. I'm always mm -hmm. going to have the student loan. I might even die with this loan. So when the loan, that loan was paid off, it was just and that was a breakthrough, a oh, big yeah. weight yeah. off of me. Yeah. You, you could feel the thing snap in the spirit. On oh that. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was That's amazing. cool. Yeah, the chains are coming off. Yes, sir. I love it. That is so fun. Now, what are your kids' names? This is Palace, who's eight. Say hi. This is Paris, who's 12. All right. She's kind of here. That's it. Got <laughs> it. I love it. So do they know what's going on, or have you guys just kind of done it and they watched? No, they've been very involved, and Paris has even offered up her allowance here and there to try to help to expedite Aww. the plan. Uh, but we told her to keep her money, yes. and we'll keep going and keep attacking. And believe it or not, Dave, we've been talking about coming on this show for about three years. Yes. Wow. So we made a plan to come here. So yeah. this is a big day. It's well, a very it's big day, and we came just for you. Yes. We don't have any family here. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here for Thanksgiving. You're we going came back. just for yeah. you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Wow. Well, that's absolutely incredible. I'm honored to be part of the goal and part of the victory as well that you guys got to come up here so these kids they get it and, and more importantly have you realized yet that you not only got out of debt but you probably have changed your whole family tree that is that was my motivation Definitely. they um one of the things I, I think you know we look back on it when we first started and thought why didn't i know this mm. both great educations mm -hmm. and um just felt like I was ill-equipped, mm -hmm. um, e either in personal life, marriage. Um, so that's that's a big thing for us. We we, yeah. we actually teach a, a marriage class and and lead couples through uh, love and respect. Oh, I know yeah. you, you're you're yeah. very familiar yeah, with absolutely Agri and, stuff. Um, it's good stuff. And uh, and so so for us, it's about not just our family tree, for others as well. Yeah, we got a number of people that are watching today. Uh, and just want this to encourage them that yeah. they can do it. It's, it's not about mm -hmm. us. God is no respect of person, man. Mm -hmm. He is. He's able to do for me exactly what, what he's able to do for me. He can do for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, anything we can do to influence and help others, that's what this has really been about. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're just excited, man. Thank you so much for well, your thank gift. You. Uh, you're, you're such a gift, man. And yeah. just wanted to, I've been waiting thank and you. praying for the day I could come and tell you. I love it. Thank you. Well, we're honored to have you guys today. All right, gather the folks around, Nikki and Ty and Great. gang from Atlanta, Georgia. $147,000 paid off in three years, six months, and 14 days. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free! <laughs> I love it. And the crowd in Martha's Place goes wild. Congratulations, you guys. Very well done. That is seriously fun. Yeah. And you guys that are listening, you're next. Yeah, you. Talking to you. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Now, remember I said that your debt should not exceed 10% of your gross income. Theirs exceeded 10%. It was about equal to their 
annual income. And do you see that they developed a very aggressive plan to attack that in a little over three years and come out of $147,000 worth of debt? That's commendable. And it's great that they involve their children to teach their children the mistakes that the parents made so that it would give them a basis for financial wisdom in their life so that the mistake of the parent is not sent down to the children. They can learn and profit from their parents' mistakes. Most parents do not take the time to share financial information with their children that helps them to be good financial stewards over their resources. And we have a responsibility to help our children to understand these principles so that when they're heads of their own households that they can make good decisions in their families, in their relationship. In your nucleus family, you, you not only inherit the diet of your parents, you inhabit their financial habits, their financial habits. And so as you learn better, teach it to your children, teach it to your children. I don't care whether you have to get some beans out on the table and uh, make some illustrations, teach it to your children. You'll be glad that you did. And teach them this principle that God owns everything, we own nothing. God owns everything, we own nothing. We are only stewards of what God entrusts us with. We are only stewards of it, we are stewards. And may I say to you that Jesus never wanted us to live tit for tat. He wanted us to live generously and treat people the way that we want to be treated. I want you to notice his words, the words of Jesus our Lord in Luke chapter 6, verse 30 through 36. Give to everyone who asks you, and when someone takes something that is yours, don't ask for it back. Now that is a mouthful to swallow. And please, you must understand, if you ever interpret any one scripture based on that one scripture, you're taking things out of context. That's why in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Now, one of the things that we learn from the wisdom of the Proverbs, it teaches us this, let your giving be with discretion. That means you, I mean, none of us is rich enough to give money to everybody who asks us. You, you go broke just going downtown. <laughs> I mean, really. Your giving has to be with description. Now, unless you got it like that. Now, some of y'all might have hit a lot. I don't know. You might have had a rich uncle to die. I don't know. But if you got it like that, that's, go ahead and knock yourself out. But you have to interpret Scripture in the light of other Scripture. But I want you to understand the spirit of what Jesus is saying to us. The spirit of it, of what he's communicating to us, is treat people the way that you would want to be treated. Notice he says in verse 31, do to others what you would want them to do to you. That's the spirit of this whole passage. Treat other people the way you would want to be treated. And notice what he says, if you love only the people who love you, what praise should you get? Even sinners love the people who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, what praise should you get? Even sinners do that. If you lend things to people, always hoping to get something back, what praise should you get? Even sinners lend to other sinners so that they can get back the same amount. But love your enemies. Do good to them. And notice this, and lend to them without hoping to get anything back. Now this is for real mature people. I want you to notice what, what this says. Love your who? Enemies. enemies. Do good to them. How? lend to them without hoping to get anything back, and they are enemy. I think we better say, Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> if he's telling you to lend to your enemy, lend to your enemy, to your enemy. It takes a whole lot of maturity in Christian love. I mean, when you see a person doing that, I guarantee you it's not their flesh. I promise you that is not the flesh. He says, then you will have a great reward. Great reward. This is something that will qualify you for a great reward. And you will be children 
of the Most High God because he is kind even to people who are ungrateful and full of sin. Ungrateful and full of sin. Now, he's not talking about your children. Don't take it personally. <laughs> now, notice, he says, verse 36, show mercy just as your father shows mercy. Isn't it a wonderful thing that he's basically saying to us, I want you to treat other people the way that you would want to be treated. Wouldn't that be beautiful if when you went into stores that people would just treat you the way that they would honestly want to be treated? You ever been in a place and people were nasty with you? And you know that they wouldn't want anybody to be nasty to them in the same way. Treat people with the, the same dignity and respect that you would want to be treated. And, and then you, you manifest the love of Christ. You show mercy just as your Father shows mercy. Because everybody's going to mess up at some times. You're going to make some mistakes. We're, we're not perfect people. And so we, we, we need mercy. We need grace. We need help. Uh, let, let me give you just a few closing tips here as, as about teaching your dollar some cents. Make it your priority to pay down all of your debt as soon as possible. Make that your priority to pay off all of your debt as soon as possible. Pay it down. Work on paying down your debt because you're paying interest on it. It's not just free. And they get you into loans saying 0% finances for the first six months. Oh, but they're going to get their money on the back end. Trust me, they're going to get their money. It is not, there's no such a thing as a charity loan. They want something. Make it your priority to pay down all of your debt as soon as possible. Here's another tip. Start saving for retirement now, not later. Now, not later. I mean, we probably should have done it years ago. But the next best time is right now. Right now, right now. Now, here's another thing. This is just a wisdom tip to teach your dollar some sense. You've got to build yourself an emergency fund. Build yourself an emergency fund. You, you know how the old folks used to talk about having a little stash for a rainy day. It's not a matter of if it's going to rain. It's only a matter of when it's going to rain. Because there are tons of horror stories where people have become financially ruined by health issues. Do you know that probably 80% of the people that end up filing personal bankruptcy file it because of exorbitant medical costs that they can't pay? Health issues. Who plans on getting sick? Who plans on that? But health issues, it's an unexpected kind of a thing. Suppose you were put out of commission on your job for six weeks. What are you going to do? You have some kind of uh, addendum, uh, to, uh, additional uh, insurance policy that will help you through those times? I mean, ha have you planned on that as a, as a part of your emergency fund? Um, uh, if you have to deal with a, a lawsuit and, and you need money, you need an emergency fund? If, if a person who's been saving money for retirement and all of a sudden you get divorced, do you know what that does to your your retirement plans, when you were thinking that you were going to be together and all of a sudden you divorce? Can you imagine the nightmare? Uh, uh, if you enter into something that you think is a great deal and it ends up being a, a business nightmare, it was a bad deal, and you lose money when you thought that you were going to gain money? Anybody ever lost anybody? Anybody ever in the, when the housing bubble burst and you were upside down in your mortgage? Who planned on that? Who could have told you that something like that was going to happen? Who could have told you that when the bottom fell out of our economy in 2008, that sometimes that you would be out of work for an extended period of time? So you have to have an emergency fund to, to help cushion you during those times, just to prepare you in, in, uh, in as best ways as you possibly can. You, you may not be able to think of everything, but do the best that you can. It's just a matter of time that something is going to go out on your car. 
you got a budget, you, you may as well have a, a, an emergency fund because something is going to go out on your car. You have to get a new set of tires, your <laughs> transmission needs to be repaired, and your washing machine is going to go out on you, something breaks down on, in, in the house. You don't be planning, and, and let me tell you this, these things happen at the most inopportune times. They, things never break down when your bank account is running over with money. <laughs> It just never breaks down when this, this stuff is running over with money, you know? I mean, I've seen people, you know, they can break a window out of the car and they, they drive around for, for months with a piece of cardboard in the window. <laughs> They're not trying to be stylish. It just caught them at a bad time, you know? I can't tell you the number of people that's driving around today without any insurance. Then, I mean, it, you know, they, they got to go to work and they don't have the money to pay the insurance. And the car got gas in it. <laughs> oh, they're going to work, <laughs> hoping and praying. <laughs> and they pull up a side of police officer, they, they want to do total speed limit. And the model citizen at that time, just model citizens. It's amazing. So you never know what's going to happen. Here's another tip. Stash away a portion of every paycheck preferably into a 401k or at least an IRA account or the bare minimum, a savings account with the pitiful little interest that you get off of that. <laughs> but stash away a portion of every paycheck, a portion of it. Here's another tip. This is, this is a commonsensical thing. This is not rocket science. But don't spend friv frivolously. Don't spend frivolously. You know, don't buy something unless you can get a good deal on it. You end up paying the highest cost at times when you're desperate. Don't go shopping when you're desperate. Just don't go when you're desperate. Don't, don't even go grocery shopping when you're starving. You buy too much junk. Everything looks good to you. I mean, just, you, you know, you wind up, your cart is running over with stuff because you went shopping while you were starving. Don't spend frivolously. And then don't invest in anything that you don't understand. Before you invest, investigate. Before you invest, investigate. Don't invest in anything that you don't understand. You don't understand it, don't invest in it. Somebody's talking about something new, some type of, if you don't understand it, don't invest in it. Just don't invest in things that you don't understand. Now, this is, again, it's not rocket science. These are just some simple tips to help us to teach our dollars some sense so that we can be good stewards for the Lord. There are some things that God might want us to do. I mean, have you thought about the fact that if God wants you to go on a missionary trip, but if you're so far in debt, you can't even play, pay for your plane ticket? There might be some opportunities that God wants to use you in, and it, money broadens your options. So we have to be good stewards over what he has entrusted. It's, money is really a very spiritual thing, and most people don't, they don't realize that. And this is why God says that if we're not faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will trust us with the true riches, which are spiritual? spiritual riches so that we can teach our dollars some sense. It is a reflection of a discipline that comes in the life because the Holy Spirit will have to restrain us. When you're uh, walking down the mall and he has to restrain you, when you see a brand new pair of shoes that you just, it just perfectly matches an outfit that you already have and they're so unique and you just love the way the heels are made <laughs> and it's just calling you, just calling you. And he lures you with just, just try it on. It doesn't cost to try it on. And you go in and you try stuff on. And, and then, then I believe that these people that work there are trained to tell you how nice they look. Oh, that's you. Oh, oh. And you wind up buying something and now you've got to go home and try to find a place in your closet that's already running over with stuff. <laughs> because remember what Jesus said in verse 15, 
that one's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. One's life, our real joy, our contentment comes because of our relationships. And let me just tell you, if you can have a good relationship and be in love with somebody, my daddy used to say just as long as we're together, we're happy. He said, we, I'd be satisfied if I have to drink sugar water and eat soda crackers. Now that's, it was obviously country. I don't know anything about sugar water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sugar water, is that? I know about Kool-Aid, is that sugar water? I don't know. <laughs> but you know how the Bible talks about it is better you know, to have a little bit and eat it in peace than to have a whole lot and be there with a contentious person in your life. Because life does not consist in the abundance of things. It's about the quality of the relationships that he gives us. Our relationship with God, the relationship with the Holy Spirit, the relationship with who he has made us to be, and the relationships that are in our home, our friendships, our relatives, our children, our grandchildren, those relationships, that's living. When you have the things that, that give you the most life, you have to ask somebody who has gray hair because they are not concerned about the latest fashion. They want to see their people. It's in relationships. They get fulfilled. I used to wonder how my grandmother could be so fulfilled just by sitting down watching us play as though it was, she acted like she was out of the movies, <laughs> just being entertained. Like it, it did something for her. Didn't cost her a dime, didn't cost any money, but just watching ministered something in her own soul. And when you do that, it really does fulfill you at such a low cost. And it's, it will prove to us and to the Lord that we are good stewards over little, and here's the principle, that if you're faithful over that which is least, he will make you ruler over that which is much. I pray that you got something out of the word of the Lord tonight. I really do. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.